Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. I'm Oluwani Femi Kolawale, and with me in the studio today is Bolu and Chimgozu. Yes, we have a few things to talk about today. One bordering on certain fintech startups in Nigeria and the other about a workplace conversation that ensued online earlier in the week. Late last uh, month, that was April, CBN released a directive um, ordering certain, like, four new banks. Are they all new banks? Fintechs. Let's call them fintechs to pause um, any new sign-ups on their platforms. That um, it affected CUDA, OPE, PAMPE, and MoneyPoint. And it means that it is almost a month now since these four fintechs have not been able to onboard new customers on their platform. It's supposed to be temporary, but um, what is in the news again now is that this might have to go on for a few more months. Why? Why did this happen? Um, I think since December, right? I believe since December, the CBN has been making different moves to make sure that Fintechs in Nigeria have standardized KYC platform um, procedures, rather, and this is to prevent fraud um, because of the high can um, um, cases yeah. of fraud, and also to um, control. This one is is debatable to control how people use these platforms to um, disrupt the FX market and. The crypto market yeah. also in Nigeria, and all these things are valid because that is where reg regulators are there. They are trying to make it good for the people that are playing in the industry and the people that are using them. But it seems like um, these things that these regulations are having are affecting um, the the fintech. And that this is why I say that because there, there was also another while that one was going on. Um, another directive came. This involved the CAC that all POS agents in um, Nigeria okay. should register with the CAC. Our insight of the week is about the value of POS transactions in Nigeria between 2012 and 2022. So it's actually very interesting. In 2022, we recorded 50 billion era in POS transactions. And then by 2022, we actually 1,500x this number. So in 2022, we went all the way to 41 billion, sorry, that's actually a trillion, 41 trillion era in POS transactions. That's mind-blowing. Um, this data was supplied to us by Intel Point. So if you want more interesting data points like this, just go to intelpoint.co or you can just click on the link in the description and check out lots and lots of data points by Intel Point. And there was this Intel Point um, data that came out that showed how the number of POS um, agents have increased between in the last in the last 10 years. That's between 2012 and 2022. It, yeah, it was between 2023 and 2024 actually. Yeah, the, yes, the, the, the spike. Point. The spike okay, happened okay. between 2020. 2022 and 2024 okay. and um we see that this is a huge market and the numbers that these new banks are recording is usually from their agency banking um um product now for you to now say these people should not onboard new customers that means it's affecting what this there's not there's no saying about it was it in december when money point said um launched personal banking as they intended to onboard like 4.6 million new customers in three months. Let's hope they let's let's imagine they were able to achieve that between January and March, right? By now, if they had other milestone, this particular situation that is on ground is affecting it, and we understand that regulators have to regulate. Now, why are we talking about this now? If you are able to bring anyone that is at the ends of affairs at these startups to this conversation, they will tell you how it's affecting them internally, right? So we want to talk about 
the legality of these regulations. It might sound weird, but CBN said they are not winch hunting them, right? But in the way it's looking, it's as if there's a target on the back of these um, new banks or these fintech platforms. So I think we should just start from um, talking about all these things that are expected from new banks and um, fintech platforms, startups rather. How legal are they? Hmm. Goes in. Interesting question. Okay. So which one do you want me to start with? Everything. There are a lot of, as I, as I mentioned, they are going through a lot. Hmm. Right? You can start with the onboarding, stop, like, especially telling them to stop onboarding till further notice, hmm. although temporary. You can start with that. Then you can move to um, making them um, t- making their agents to register their businesses, mm. right? So, the only thing here that probably looks not legal, I don't want to use illegal so nobody will carry me in the night, but the only <laughs> thing here that looks not legal is asking banks, sorry, new banks to post new customer onboarding. That's okay. about the only thing that um, looks suspect first because jo- at least to the best of our knowledge only four banks or four new banks are, are affected are affected and also because there are better ways for you to manage fraud than say stop new signups right mm. um i don't know how many people uh, could have for example on boards in a day or let's say in a month but they are likely to be onboarding it's very unlikely that at least, let's say, see, it's very unli- unlikely that they have up to 30% of them as fraudulent entities, which if you say you want to convert fraud, um, you'd probably say, well, that's that's on the high side. Mm-hmm. I don't know the exact numbers, obviously, but it's very, very unlikely that a huge chunk of your new signups are for a, for a, a business that is that established. Too. Yeah. It's very unlikely that a huge chunk of your signups are um fraudulent entities right mm-hmm. so that's the only problem that's the only and, and so adding to that you know they've also uh, cbn has also introduced new kyc requirement procedures yeah. as is required so yeah. i'm just looking at it now between the last four months for instance you've introduced ways for them to like get better with their kyc but now you're telling them to stop onboarding yeah, just I mean, for it, these kyc it's, reasons it's it, i it's um so it's targeted at different segments. So what you're telling them now to do is like update your KYC um, docs, basically. So what details do you have on your customers? Update it. Okay. And I mean, standard KYC documents have always been your BVN or your and NIN I'm... or like um, passports and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they would also ask you for a few other documents, but now they are going a step further and saying, we are going to verify your address. Okay. Um, there are some people on social media who have expressed surprise, annoyance, whatever, disappointment that they have been asked to verify addresses. And while I get where some of that is coming from, mm-hmm. it's nothing unusual. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was in school, my roommate had a, he had a job where he helped First Bank verify customer data. Mm-hmm. So basically, where do you live? They would just hand him a a pile of forms and then he had to go around town along with a lot of other people and their job was basically find out where these people live and make sure that what is written here matches with what um what with matches with reality mm-hmm. but for fintechs what has happened is in the last four or five years we've had um startups like uh, what's the name again i think okay hi that are saying no we can help you verify who these customers are. Mm-hmm. Um, we can help you verify addresses as well. We've ha- had people like Smile ID, um, Identity Pass, I think, who are now saying, okay, fine. We don't, we don't. Um, I mean, they may not help you uh, verify addresses, mm-hmm. but they can help you verify that the person who is doing it is actually a real person. Mm-hmm. So um, face ID or selfie verification, as most of them call it. Mm-hmm. So we've seen a few others, and then now the, the CBN is saying, okay, um include addresses okay um i can understand why why any 
bank customer in Nigeria would be wary of submitting bank submitting address details, but bro, you're already doing that. When with you submit your traditional banks. Yeah, with traditional banks with everybody, when you submit utility bills, right? You are you're not just submitting utility bills. Yes. Your utility bills usually carry your address. Yes. Right. So if someone really wants your address, they you just have need it. to yeah, they, they already have it. So that's that's not a problem. But I think part of where the problem comes from is we are just seeing we've seen the whole requirements about should you include social media details mm. in account opening, right? And I mean, at this point, it's still up in the air. The um the the court says um you open social media. Mm-hmm. It's social media it's out there in the public. Anybody okay. can access it. Yeah. So your bank asking for it is no longer a big deal. I don't know why you need my social media um, account for a financial for a financial service. I really don't know why you need my social media account. I get You're my covering address. your basis. I get All my the basis. <laughs> but considering that I can open and close a social media account, that's I will. do not see why someone thinks that that's a very good um, that's a very good suggestion but let's let's do that side. so I'm, I'm thinking that anybody who is skeptical about sending in address details is doing that as a result of the government's ant- antecedent we are seeing mm. crackdowns on how people we've seen crackdowns rather of how people use um, social media so anybody would be would be smart or in well within their rights to be wary of that but really it's not a big deal um, it's not a big deal address, i think it's just one of those I things there's something something we are not um, we are not looking at in terms of um, all these things that uh, all these new regulations that they are trying to put into place. Okay. And um, one reason why I think these four banks or four fintechs have been targeted, I think it still goes back to their fight against crypto P2P, right? And it has reason- to be crypto. A quick one if you're listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Please leave us a review. The reason why I say that is because one, one, the first point is a good number of people that are crypto merchants that do crypto P two P use fintech, banks, use this fintech. So, so, um, so, so wait, one, wait. wait let, let me just let me let me finish. So one, can you authoritatively say that? So one reason why I say that is I recently saw a document right of accounts that were frozen, mm-hmm. right, where they placed a lien on them. And where, when you look at the owners of these accounts, they put the account number and the names of the, bank. the banks. So when you look at the traditional banks, they had very few names there. Mm. But when you look at Money Point, when you look at OP, I think Money Point and OP had the largest, it took like a whole page. It makes sense though. It took a whole So I think it's, it, 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 and, it's, and it's. When you transact a lot, if you do a lot of P2P, if you go on P2P platforms and use. You do crypto P2P very often. Um, you go to buy bit, you go to Binance. Um, the most, the amount of um, account numbers you see are usually pound pay, money. Okay. Right? Those are the... It's, it sounds, it's, it's, yeah, it sounds it's um, fair. You, you, you know, this... So this, here's the reason the, why I don't think it sounds fair, right? Um, one, who are the more, who are the people more likely to use... Um, Cryptocurrencies. Young people. Good. Who is more likely to open a new bank, an account with a new bank? Young people. So it could it not just be circumstantial that the vast no, 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 Maybe she, no, no, you know, you know the thing is, point. you know, especially with the fact that crypto mm. is, we don't know where Nigeria is standing. We don't know where the CBN is standing with crypto. Mm. So if you want to be safe, you would go for a platform where. Maybe regulators These are, are not all regulated entities. Yes, that they you're are. About. They are, but would you, it, okay, you, yes, also on that problem. So, so do, do you think? Do you how think? Do you differentiate what is a crypto transaction and what is just another another transaction? <laughs> Olu, please help with so that. The, the thing that guys cannot. So you actually you actually making my point. So no. if you are saying that it is more likely for, if you say a particular demography of people, right, mm-hmm. young people, use crypto platforms. And those people are most likely to open accounts with the likes of, um, you know, these neo banks. Yes. Would it not make sense that if you are if you have a fight against um, people doing crypto P two P, you go after that those go people after. that so are enabling them. Why did you, you not go after all fintechs 
or all do, new do you remember that at the time the that this that that cbn started so this okay. this issue with mm-hmm. oh uh, financial they, they they focused on all financial institutions mm-hmm. at the around december october december when they started coming after them for kyc before your kyc they are Memos and their circulars were targeted at so why financial stop institutions. Only for from so I, I, they are the largest. So they are the largest. No, so they have the most users. And you already made the point that that no sense. If those you want banks. To stop, if you want to stop mm-hmm. crime, you do not just say, "Oh, um, let's look at the four largest." Because here's the thing. Okay, fine. You stop the four largest people from um, from onboarding. onboarding, right? Good. It looks like a smart strategy, Abi. Mm-hmm. You think you're the only smart person? You're not. I would simply move on to other people. Okay. For instance, now, um, before you move on to those other people, mm. what, let, what let, 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 let's 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 answer the question of why people go for this particular these ones that have become the largest. On, you, One, you they are trying to stop scale um, onboarding. <laughs> so, so <laughs> for we, now, for okay, the reason why you, you the, the reason why you make a choice for for which of these fintech startups you are making a choice for one, you are looking for one that is more seamless and the one you can still trust with your money, right? The other fintech that might not be doing as much as they are, people might still have this skepticism that when? okay, maybe I can't trust them with my money, uh, and even though there is still a, there's less barrier to entry, and then you are trying to protect yourself from going to traditional banks to avoid their wala. Someone that, someone that really wants to carry out the crime, yeah. You do what they want to do. I'm just saying that it looks suspicious. Yes, you so, can do the whole 80 20 rule, or you can say that's what they are trying to do, where um, the vast majority of customers are probably going to come from a handful mm-hmm. of platforms. But yes, it, if I do not want to be logical, it looks, it looks very suspect that you're focusing on just four people. If you want to stop crime there are better ways to do it than stopping onboarding but yeah. why do you think they are focusing on those these four people that's the problem it's not clear i could make here's the thing i can't authoritatively say why they are focusing on any of these four people without making it look like you're witch hunting them and anything we have anything we discuss is just going to be except you are in the heart of the person who is making the decision. And this you person that's making the decision is saying that they are not which ones in them. They are the just problem. trying to no, 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 no. regulate. If, that's, if, if you case, look if that's the case, we should never debate any government policy because they say one thing and they, they do an of entirely course, true. I'm thing. just trying so, to let you know the mind of people that no, are doing it. It's not, they their, said, it's not their mind. So it's they're, what they're, they've told they're, you. They're, it's a carefully curated <laughs> answer. Because okay, okay. Their response, I'm saying their response. So they are trying to say now that these things should have been in place before now. Which one? All these regulations that are coming, Which one? Make, making sure that they are stopping agents. On boarding. No, be, no, make, not stopping on body. To be clear, the, to be, wait, to the be reason clear, they are I stopping on body is to make sure these people get their KYC no, it makes into absolutely place. No sense. It makes absolutely no sense to me. All you need to do is say, Chief, your KYC, your customer onboarding process is suspect. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Can you improve it between in the next three weeks? But you know, if the they tell them weeks, to. Um, now this is not me making case for CBN. I'm you, just you trying to say cases for them, I'm not No no go on go on. I'm go just on, trying to say that okay for instance now if you say okay do this thing between this and then mm-hmm. like and they still go ahead so it is it will be a work in progress You're the regulator but for crying out loud you, yes, you tell me to do something within a week. When have when has regulator said these are they should all be, four regulated entities OP has a license Kuda has a microfinance bank license you could take it from them if they do not um go yes. ahead with, with do, what you said they should do mm-hmm. Uh, Money Point has a a license as well. I think Pampi also does. So if you if you are a regulator, this is very very simple. Mm. Someone uh, has lax processes according to you. Yeah. And then you say, okay, see, we have a problem with your processes, right? Fix it in the next four weeks. If you do not fix it, we take your license. Or, no, I mean it's probably not going to get to that. But if you do not fix it, you pay X fine. For mm-hmm. example, yeah. Or if you do not fix it within this uh, within four weeks. We are going to stop you from onboarding. Yeah. We did not see anything like that. You just yes. woke up one morning and you said, oh, all of you stop onboarding. How does that make sense? Four of you, rather. Four of you stop, stop onboarding. Like now, that how makes does it. that make sense? Here's the thing, right? If I'm looking... The thing is, yes, you could say you're trying to kill or fight crime, which is debatable, Shah, but you could say you could say, you could say stuff like that. Um, but look at the bigger implications of all of this, right? You get um you get to the point where and yes it's going to look like I'm I'm siding the fintechs which is very weird but <laughs> look at it holistically whether holistically or not but 
look at the wider ramifications of all of this shit, mm -hmm. right? You have a CBN that just wakes up one morning and pulls regulations and then businesses are basically scrambling. Yeah. Now, for four weeks, like I said earlier, I don't know how many people these guys on board, but let's assume that they are adding, um, let's say, 300k users every month. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fast. now you we are hearing like, that we are hearing that this um this is not going to it's, it should be on for a couple of months. Like it's, now it's, that means for the foreseeable future because a couple of months could be anything from one month mm -hmm. to several months. Mm -hmm. Um, for the foreseeable future, you can't onboard new customers, which means you can't make money. Yes. which means if I am an investor looking at you and I'm saying. You were just on your own one day. Government came and said, don't onboard new customers. Mm -hmm. What fate do you pass? And you are simultaneously trying to cut investors. For kind of like, make it make it's, sense. It's, 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 you're, it's, you're, you're cutting it's, investors it's, and you're still uh, cutting the legs from under the Yes, we understand working. how difficult these times, these times are for for this fourth Index, fintech yeah. especially and now you are telling um, POS agents to register, which is, which is, we are not debating the legality of that. But, from from what we found that when we went out to ask people on the street, some of them are willing to just drop it and not and not just do POS again. So that means they might even still be losing customers in that aspect. So business banking, business business. I am not saying they should not register. I'm just trying to say that a lot of things is happening with them at the same time, right? So they might be losing customers on the business on the um, agency, ma agency fund. banking front. Then you are, they are losing on personal banking, banking. front. So it's as if they are not get, catching a break. So, yeah. But the good, it seems like it's good that they keep having meetings. Every other day, CBN has meeting with fintech stakeholders every other day. I'm just hoping that this thing, they get it over with soon because these are businesses businesses i understand that this and uh, the pos business came at a time where there is actually a, there's somewhere to be filled and it came came with a lot of hope for people that are looking for jobs and everything like that it's like it came to fill in something but it's it is still business and i i'm, I'm hoping that cbn and these people Speak like they well, talk about they it and so. And they, stop I'm not. I'm, see, you see, you see, we did not focus. You see, we did not focus on the registry business. Mm. No, we did not you, focus you more on it yeah, because yeah. yes, it, they have to, as mm. it should be, it should right? Go. So we are, we are, we are, we are wishing this fintech. Yeah, not wishing them if they like. No, they should not let me finish people. what I'm saying now. We are wishing them the best, the likes of PO, the likes of OPE, PAMPE, Money Point, and Kuda, because we understand this is trying times, and uh, we are open that um, any of you can come and discuss whatever it is you are going um, going through internally on a podcast like this, if you don't mind, right? Uh, maybe some conversations you're having with CBN are supposed to make it out. But this is a good place to also talk about um, what the companies are going, what the startups are going through at a time like this because yeah. we understand it is difficult. Now let's move on to the next story. Last week, um, a former employee from a Nigerian startup, a banking as a service startup block, came online to not... Not the person, but yes, affiliated. Let's just say the person came online to mention how um, she has been owed some outstanding salary, which has lasted for 16 months. Um, it generated a lot of outrage. Um, if you were on Twitter, if, if you are on Nigerian Tech Twitter, it will have Come across, it will have come across your timeline. Different people are talking about it from different angles, owing salaries, um, people's faves, and all what not. Well, we say that um, since this has to do with um, a Nigerian startup, and um, for posterity's sake, these are the things we get to document. We want to talk about it on this podcast and um, look at some of the things that has been um, some of the projections or conjectures that have been raised concerning this particular matter so Bolu is going to give us like a, sh a rundown of what really ensued between what what um, the founder mentioned what the ex-employee said what the total tech point and everything we'll give you a load and then we will discuss about it in a few minutes so Bolu give us okay. a load down all right, so yeah, um, 
it was a very con- controversial issue, you know, caused a lot of um, a lot of tweets going up and down on Twitter, and you know, we we're able to reach out to the employee and ex employee. The ex-employee and the employer, okay. and they give us their sides of the story. And By the way, the employee employer is Edmond, Edmond Olotu. Olotu. Yes, um, very active active on active Twitter. On if Twitter. You Twitter, you most likely know him. And then yeah. the ex-employer employer employee is Benita yes. Anuforo. Yes. Um, the name of the company is Block. In case you don't know, so. It turned out that sometime in 2022, Block decided to slash salaries by 60 uh, by 40 percent. Mm-hmm. Right, so this means that they'll be paying. Um, if your salary is 10,000 naira, they will now start paying 6,000 naira. Mm-hmm. But then they said they are waiting for a particular liquidity event, and when this liquidity liquidity event happens, the remaining 40 percent that we, that they were supposed to pay you, they will round everything up, and then they will pay you. Mm-hmm. So if they kept paying you six thousand naira for January, February, March, April, right, the remaining four thousand naira during that time, yeah, put together and pay. Mm-hmm. That was the issue. agreement. Yeah. So by the time Benita got into the company, this happened two weeks after Benita got into the company, right? She got into the company, and two weeks later they are slashing salaries because the company was struggling yes because the company was struggling and it was like um an agreement between them uh, we assume they agreed that all the employees agreed that okay you yes. can slash our salary according to um screenshots we saw and according to the statements we received from Edmond Olotu the CEO okay. of the company he told us that it was a difficult time we spoke with employees uh the management they all came together and they decided to do that okay. instead of laying off forty percent of the workforce. Of the workforce okay. They would do that instead. And um, Benita's side of the story was that yes, they said they were going to do that, but even that sixty percent, it was not regular. There were some months where salaries were delayed. Right mm-hmm. altogether, I think it was almost three months, two or three months. The CEO also confirmed it. He said yes. There were times salaries were delayed. But the backlog of the sixty percent were paid. Yes, sixty percent was paid. Right? Yes. Um, Benita left the company. Um, I think she decided she was leaving the company. There were some issues within the company, and she de- she decided she was going to leave. Right. She was removed from. She was in management. She handled compliance. Okay. So she was removed from the management group. And you know there were some back and forth, and she felt she could not work there anymore. Mm-hmm. And she trained the person that would be her successor, and she left sometime in twenty 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 three. Okay. Right. And now the bone of contention is she still owed money because they were told that because the sixty percent salary payments continued. Throughout the time she was there. So she still owed the forty percent that she was promised. Right? That all employees were actually promised mm-hmm. to be paid because said right after when we get a liquidity event, we'll pay you that amount. Mm-hmm. CEO Edmond Luzu also confirmed that yes, we said that. Okay. Right. And this is where the issue is, right? That forty percent is where the issue is. Um that forty percent totaled three point seven million uh, for yeah. That will be paid to Benita. Okay. 0.7 million naira. Um, one million naira has been paid. Okay. But there's still remaining 2.7 million naira that needs to be paid. The one million naira was, it wasn't gotten immediately. I think Benita had to um, bring in our lawyers, you know, to get them to write a letter to the company and tell them that, okay, um, this is the amount of money you're owing me. Please pay up. Yeah. And they paid one million naira. Now there's 2.7 million. That's now is the issue. Okay. So I guess from this little story, you understand yeah. what the what went bone of down. contention is yes. and what really happened. Yes, and um, I, I'm also sure that the founder also mentioned that this liquidity, liquidity, liquidity event, event has not, has happened. not happened yet. So which means that um, it's probably not only Benita that has not been paid that 40% backlog yet uh, since it is contingent on the liquidity event yes 
that money is contingent, like you said, on a liquidity event. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we've not been able to confirm with other employees that block because mm-hmm. uh, we've reached out to a number of them, but they did not respond. So we've not been able to confirm if we received, though we saw people on Twitter saying that um, they are ex-employees also and they did not have a really good experience working at the company. Okay. But none of them has come forward to like tell tech point, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. Mm-hmm. Right. And... Yes, the forty percent is dependent on that liquidity event happening, and according to the CEO, it has not happened, happened yet. Now, um, the reason we're able to hear about this is because it's made it to Twitter. Yes. So it seems that it didn't go to the court. It it has not made it to the court. It has not made it to the court. So if you want to talk about that, um, what will have been the best approach to this? Okay, so it's it's. I spoke to a lawyer about it and he said it's a very tricky situation, right? Okay. Your employee promised you so so, so and so and they've not fulfilled on that promise. Mm-hmm. Now it's a question of it's kind of like a contract, right? But the only difference now is there doesn't seem to be a written contract oh. that says, Okay, I'm going to pay you this for now. Mm-hmm. Um when this happens, I'm going to pay you this. Yeah. Right. And on that issue is it seems like the liquidity the liquidity event was supposed to happen sometime in April 2023. Okay. Right. But the founder said according to Benita, right? But the founder is saying it wasn't as if there was a specific date that was given that okay, this liquidity liquidity event will happen at this time. Mm-hmm. Right. It is when it happens. It can happen today, it can happen tomorrow, in five it can years. happen in the next two years. Mm-hmm. That is kind of like what it sounds like. So the fact that there is no written document would make it um, difficult. kind of difficult, right? To um make a case for this in for the employees who would probably come forward and say, I'm owed this, I'm I was promised this and I'm owed this and I should be paid, right? So, one 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 thing that could um, that could probably have been done was you say I was not paid my complete salary according to my contract. I'm supposed to be paid one million every month. Yeah, right. It was slashed by so so amount. Yeah, and right? you have and bank, bank statements to prove that. Okay, exactly. so that is one way to go about it. Mm. Right, but now there's also the issue of. Okay, but then you received this for this duration of time and nothing was said. Right. And then the founder will probably have people to back him up and say, oh, we communicated this and... Before but then said. there's no paper trail. Hmm. Right. So it's a very... It's a very dicey tricky, very tra- dicey situation. situation. Hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 I think that's the lesson to any employee hmm. that's listening to this document let it be a paper trail that like email trail or paper trail written something written to mm. back up some of this it goes beyond the gentleman's agreement sometimes you know it can come in handy at any point to any point, yeah. to to save uh, to save you and there, there were other issues that were raised of course these are just comments from people that were reacting to the story and some people mentioned the issue of how the possibility of this being related to wage theft <laughs> and how it can be pursued in that line. Okay. Um, wage theft. Where I heard, it, I heard about it for the first time from that um, from that person's comment. But yeah, um, we went ahead to dig and see if there's anything there at all. Um, but did you find okay, out so, anything? So the, the thing about wage theft is wage theft was used in a bill, a bill that was passed. Um, it was that's not yet been passed, but I think it went through its third reading in 2023. Um, the name of the bill is the Employees Remuneration Protection Bill, right? So, um, while you might want to make a case based on a bill, it's not an act, so it's not law yet, mm-hmm. right? There might have been things within that bill that could be used in favor of those employees, but it's not an act yet, right? So, um, one of very interesting bill actually, and I really do not see uh, a lot of things need to be tweaked within that bill because um, 
if we assume that that bill is already an act, it would mean that um, the fact that some of their pay, right, some that the fact that their salary was delayed at some point, mm -hmm. they could actually, the employer could be criminalized for that. That right? bill will never be passed. <laughs> it's, I can assure you. Yeah, because... Because your government owes salaries. But... <laughs> I remember, I think it so was I first... Be going to prison. <laughs> well, it, it went through yeah, the because first, you, you second and third reading. Uh, but it will never be passed. Because it's not government that's your salary in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they are, they are yeah, employers so, too. So, so who do you want to send? You send your governor to... Well, see, maybe they might not go to prison. But since it's, it's criminalized, that means you can pursue it. You can many years? Well, but, but so my own, is, my, own, that, that my is, own issue in this is, yeah, you guys have talked about the um, wage theft, um, salary backlogs and all. But my own is with, so I'm thinking about it, right? Um, either you slash salaries by 40% or you slash headcount by 40%. Both difficult decisions for any honest uh, for any honest entrepreneur uh, business employer mm -hmm. um but it now looks like a case of okay maybe you're trying to i don't know it feels like you're trying to take the easy decision here and then are you kidding me <laughs> no it's easier for you to tell people oh i would slash your salaries than i'll let all, let 40 percent of you go it's easier yes but it seems like the most no. um you main thing to do yes that's what i'm saying yeah like for you as a person okay it's easy for you like it's the easiest thing mm -hmm. but for your business it may not be so if you're slashing 40 percent of your workforce it's because you just need to extend your runway whatever mm. it may be you need to extend your runway and yeah. um we see we, I, I mean nobody likes to be laid off yeah right I know some motivational speakers say, oh, it was when they laid me off that my life turned around, right? Okay. But nobody really likes to be laid off, especially mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Yes. Nobody likes to be laid off. Mm -hmm. And any employer would probably not, most employers would probably not want to go down that route. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, for both your sake and even the employees, right, that might be the best thing. And the reason I say this is, um, so, now, you promised that you pay 40% on a liquidity event it's or whenever it does happen, mm -hmm. right? And the way I'm looking at it is, I don't know how many employees they had. Well, let's say they had 30 employees, 40% piles up. And are you going to pay it at once? Or are you going to pay it? Because here's the thing, the true liquidity event is either an acquisition mm. or a, a, fundraise. a fundraise. If you raise funds and the first thing you want to do it's to clear, it's backlogs. To clear salary backlogs. It doesn't really look good. In fact, if if an investor knows that you have huge salary backlogs, mm. you might be skeptical about investing. Yeah. So you're already in a weakened position. Mm -hmm. If an acquirer knows that because of I don't know, we've we've said that it doesn't appear that there was a paper trail. But if it's, if a, if a, if an acquirer knows that as they're getting into the company, one of the first things they have to do is a huge salary backlog, right? Mm. They may be skeptical about taking you on, right? It's true. So, those are both difficult situations for the business and the founder to be in. Yes. And I, if I was the one advising you, and I'm not saying this as an employee, if I was your investor, I'd have told you to let those guys go. Yeah. A very difficult decision, right? But you let them go, you stop paying pension, you stop paying life insurance, you stop paying HMO um, health insurance. And a couple of other benefits for forty percent of, you of your of your extend your runway, and you don't have any backlog, for, and now you don't have to deal with all of this, right? But yeah, I mean, it's so I I I imagine that the one maybe the founder probably didn't expect it to extend that long to, to yes, drag that's out also that also, long. That's another issue I have, right? Um, I can understand you making a promise to pay salaries when you get money, but this started in twenty twenty two. Right, mm. the liquidity event is also dependent on the market factors. Yeah, yeah. and we know that um, fundraising got really difficult for startups towards the in Africa yeah. um, towards the end of 2022. 22. So if you are looking around, you would have known that you are yeah. getting into like really yes. um, turbulent waters. In fact, you you should have known that it was harder for people to raise money for anything at all. Mm. 
and that should have informed your thinking. So while I can understand, except maybe there was an agreement that the founder felt, um, oh, okay, this is almost getting over the line. Um, and then, I mean, the money is going to come today, tomorrow, or something like that, except that was the case, right? I, I don't think you should have promised to pay mm, salary backlogs, backlogs after getting a liquidity event. I can understand you being very optimistic yeah. and thinking that it's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. But it, I, it's not, I don't know, it, it just feels, um, it just feels somehow like you should not have made that promise except you had... I mean, yeah, I mean, some people say uh, if you have, even if you have like strong, uh, what do you call it, like strong assurances, like except something is signed. But then even when something is signed, we've seen VCs pull term sheets yes. after they have made commitments. We, um, we, we've seen acquisitions yeah, we've seen stuff, got stuff stopped like that, right? yeah. so, for regulatory reasons. I don't know, that's the issue. Yeah. Uh, that, we are hoping uh, that um, they get this sorted out. Maybe it will go to court or not. Um, we're hoping that both the ex-employee and the employer finds a a common ground to have this sorted out. <laughs> okay. Well, no, well, I just, we, well, we, we, we'll keep following the story and see where it turns out. Um, Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Tech Point Africa podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, drop a review for us if you're listening on Spotify. Um, share with your friends, share with your enemies and anybody in your network we also like to hear from you. You can drop us a comment on any of our social media posts or send us an email at podcast at techpoint.africa. Podcast at techpoint.africa. We still have our newsletters running, Modern Workplace Newsletter, Tech Point Digest, and Equity Merchant. Please do well to subscribe to these newsletters. You can also check out other tech stories and everything that happened in the African tech space on techpoint.africa. Catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.